Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And yesterday, if you guys have seen my videos, T-Mobile has had a huge quarter. There's no denying it. The numbers that they put out to the public, they let everybody transparently know that things are looking very, very good at T-Mobile. That's the signal they sent to investors. That's the message that Wall Street received. Stock is up. Everything looks good. Now, as you see by the title from uh, Light Reading, another great article, which I will leave in the description down below for you guys to check out. T-Mobile eyed as the next big thing. Now, overall, what does that mean? I, yeah, you can look at T-Mobile as the next big thing, but I think what T-Mobile is trying to do, they're trying to create a perception that Verizon was able to create early on in the LTE race, that they had the best and largest 4G LTE network. That is really the perception that Verizon was able to create early on. And T-Mobile now wants to do that with 5G. They have the mid-band spectrum in abundance that no other carrier in the U.S. has. That is a huge dis disadvantage for Verizon and AT&T to not have a decent sized chunk of the higher band mid-band nationwide. So although millimeter wave is still going to show faster speeds, we all know millimeter wave is not meant for coverage it is not it will improve the range it will get better but it is not meant for millimeter wave. i mean for coverage that, that that's not what it's meant for it's meant to cover higher populated areas higher populated venues you put a small cell c rand with millimeter wave on it and you move on there's no i mean there's no business plan for any carrier that will show you we're going to put millimeter wave every 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 everywhere that is that is not going to be the case not not happening verizon is going to have the largest millimeter wave footprint followed by at&t and t-mobile is highly betting on the mid-band spectrum so what does the mid-band spectrum really bring it brings capacitive coverage so you can still offer a solid, solid footprint on 2.5 that has capacity. So if you're two, three, four miles away from the site, you could potentially still connect to N41 using HPUE and still have solid capacity that you would not get from the mid band that's currently in in today's lte network you have t-mobile effectively has spectrum that they can strictly dedicate to 5g without having to use dss or any other technology they can literally just take that chunk of spectrum put it on the nr radio and and they're good to go so if we are looking at it from a business standpoint i think the merger I think the merger was a was was solid because of Sprint doing so poorly. But I think if you look at it from a network perspective, I think the FCC the FCC needed to do a little more because there was an update to uh, Spectrum Omega, and man, if we're talking mid band, I mean, T-Mobile has it. I mean, they have it in abundance. They have a lot of it in a lot of markets. The just keep in mind the the C band auction is coming up in December. But what's going to happen? Verizon is likely to get the first hundred megahertz that's set to clear December fifth, twenty twenty one. But that spectrum is only going to be available in the top forty seven markets. T Mobile has two point five way beyond the top forty seven markets. I think T-Mobile can adequately cover the top 150 markets that they consider to be the top 150 markets with 
in some areas, T-Mobile has the, the spectrum fragmented, so they're going to try to um, bid in the next upcoming 2.5 auction to make it more contiguous. But other than that, they have more of the spectrum on a more nationwide scale than the first 100 megahertz of C-band. The, the second round, the second 180 megahertz, I don't know how many markets that will be available in. I'll definitely check that out for you guys. But man, the type of lead that T-Mobile could take here, especially if they up their CapEx even more, is if you look at it from a technical standpoint, it's it's kind of scary how what kind of a lead they could take. If if they don't expand the coverage at first because they're worried about capacity, that is likely going to happen. They are still going to gain some coverage from the Sprint keep sites. I couldn't give you guys an accurate number as to how much coverage they gain, but T-Mobile will gain some coverage from the Sprint keep sites. Not only density, but coverage as well. I've partially partially seen some of the keep sites that they're keeping. There's two in my area that they want to keep that T-Mobile has absolutely no service. So on a grand scale, they will likely not gain a large amount of of coverage from Sprint because Sprint, they didn't have, you know, they didn't even have a larger network than T-Mobile. But Sprint did have some coverage gains that where T-Mobile just didn't work. So they will, again, gain coverage from the Sprint keep sites. But they will have to put the 15,000 sites up that they have planned to cover the footprint outside of their footprint that will take some time. That will definitely take time for T-Mobile to accomplish this. But where they have gained coverage along interstates and, and busy busy highways, they're going to be able to fill in that 2.5. Yeah, it, it's not going to cover as long of a stretch as the low band, but it's going to relieve the site from congestion if it did have it. And it's going to put out some some pretty incredible speeds for T-Mobile short term if they are upgrading the network the way they say they are. From what I'm tracking here, I'm impressed. They have two to three crews out there working. I think they have my market done 100 percent by Q1 next year. That is that is my that is my thinking right now. That's the pace that they're going at. So that's what I'm thinking. Could that change? Of course. But they increased the CapEx by 100 million in Q3. I'm sure they're likely going to do the same in Q4. Q4, they're going to be very active. They're going to be very, very, very active. If they have to spend, if they have $3.2 billion left to spend for the whole quarter, this is going to be the most activity you've ever seen on a T-Mobile network in terms of upgrades. Remember, T-Mobile spent as a standalone $6 billion in the entire year. Now they're going to spend half of that just in one quarter. So those are those are some pretty high levels of spending. So just keep all that in mind. Um, very positive take from that quarter. Q4 could could even be bigger. But I think they have I think they have a huge lead over the competition right now. If we're talking 5G. I think the perception could go in T-Mobile's favor if Verizon and AT&T don't get larger chunks of, of, of spectrum more nationwide instead of just the top 47 markets, especially if AT&T comes in aggressive, aggressive with, with big money bags too, and they try to take 20, 40 megahertz of that first hundred. So then we'll have Verizon with 60 and AT&T with 40. So neither one of them were able to obtain a full slice of 100 megahertz. Whereas T-Mobile, they already have access to that now. They can already now, if they wanted to, they can already push a full 100 megahertz slice of spectrum. So again, the, the, the business strategies are different. I think Verizon is being patient. AT&T is being patient as well. You know, the FCC will have to work it out. They'll have to make more spectrum in the mid-band available. But I think for now, Verizon will continue millimeter wave. AT&T will do first net coverage expansion. 
They're kind of favoring that right now because of the contract. Density is coming for AT&T. They know they need it, especially as we get into the higher frequency. But it's coming, but Verizon's already there. They got CBRS. They're going to get C-Band. It's not nationwide. That will give T-Mobile a, a much, much, much bigger lead in the 5G leadership. We'll see how both respond. T-Mobile's issue is still kind of sort of the backhaul. They don't have their own backhaul. They're still relying on third parties. In some areas, it's not even third parties. So that's something they'll have to figure out. at and and Verizon are heavily invested in rolling out their own fiber, which will save them money later on. So it's kind of a toss-up to see which business strategy is going to work. Who is aggressive? Who stays patient? We'll see. So again, leave all your comments in the comment section down below. If you have been on the channel or are new to the channel and you have not yet liked, shared, and subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload the content. Also, follow all the social media outlets for more updates. I am posting pictures of the N41 rollout on Instagram. I also post the videos and more interactions on my Twitter. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.